I wanted to take a moment to address something that I neglected to emphasize in my previous video on centering, and that is using slow and deliberate hand motions. How that is very, very key. In addition to having your, your elbows locked, your arms locked, your hands locked, you want to use slow and deliberate hand motions. So let's just take a look here. My clay is perfectly centered and I'm pushing nice and evenly. When I know it's centered, I take my hands off slowly. If you take your hands off abruptly, you will find that you can easily throw it off. So I wasn't pushing on it there. I just took my hands off quickly. So just keep that in mind. Every step of the process, slow and deliberate hand motions. Whenever you touch or remove your hands, go slowly and evenly. Once your clay is fully centered, the next step is going to be dropping the middle. Now, different people do uh, the dropping of the middle in different ways. You will find whatever works best for you, whatever way you're most comfortable with. Um, I've seen some people where they take two thumbs in at the same time and they open. I've seen some, like when I first learned, I learned to use my fingers like I used my longest finger, like my middle finger, and I dropped it in. But this method that I wanna show, I find is helpful, very helpful for beginners. Now, uh, the most common mistake that my beginners make is sometimes they just put their finger on there and they just whoop, they stick their fingers in and it's completely off center. It is extremely important that you get it in the middle. So once the clay is fully centered, I'm keeping my left hand on the side, again, lots of water so I have no friction. Then I'm going to take my left thumb and I'm going to allow my left thumb to kind of naturally find where's that center point. I'm going to add a little bit of water and then I'm going to push my left thumb in using my right hand to guide it. Now why did I do that? I have just made a jig. By using my left thumb as a tool, okay, it really helps a beginner to get it right in the middle. If you just take your left thumb and push, Sometimes it's easier to get it off. I know it looks a little weird and sometimes it feels a little weird because you're just, you're not controlling your left thumb with your left thumb, you're controlling your left thumb with your right. But I think for, for my students as beginners, it, it tends to help a little bit. Now, when you have your um, hole in the middle, I it's usually shaped like a V, right? And the purpose of the V is that will enable you to get that 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 whole dead center right in the center. If you um, kind of just stick it straight in, sometimes you get a weird suction and everything in your, it, 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 this is just a little bit easier for kids. You kind of like sneak up on it and you, you make the V hole. Now, here is one of the tips on how do you know how much clay you have at the base of your uh, of your um, hole. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm plunging it in to the bottom of that hole. Now I'm not holding the needle tool, the clay is holding it up right now. I want to have between maybe three eighths of an inch and a half an inch of clay at the base of the wall. That will enable me to have enough room for trimming. So with the needle tool in there, I'm just gonna kinda hold this end so I don't knock it over. I take my finger and I slide it along the needle tool just until I can feel my fingertip touches the, uh, the clay. And so from the very tip of my finger, Okay, to the tip of the needle tool, that is how much clay I have at the bottom of the hole. And I have just about a half an inch, which was my target. At this point, if you have gone way too far, maybe you won't be able to trim a bottom. Or if you've gone way too far, sometimes you've gone through it. But if you haven't gone far enough, that gives you a chance to just kind of fix that up and add a little bit more depth to the hole. Now, I'm just gonna take my finger and just kind of compress over that needle tool hole that I have, and now that needle tool hole is gone, okay? All right, 
So now that I have dropped the middle, the next step is pulling this open. Now when I pull this open, I have to be aware of what kind of form am, am I making? Am I going to make something that is, a, you know, flat bottomed with a square corner on the inside? Or am I going to make something that's rounded like a bowl? Because that determines how I pull that opening. So if I wanted to make something that was, first of all, just rounded on the bottom, let's discuss that. If I'm going to pull that open toward me, I'm going to pull it and I'm going to lift my fingers so I have a rounded interior. If I'm going to do something that's flat bottom, like say for a mug, I'm going to pull it open and actually make it flat and have a corner. Whichever method I'm going to uh, do, I want to uh, put my left hand on the side to help stabilize the wall and then I'm going to use my right hand to pull it open. Now, just as a reference, I'm just going to make a little line here so you can kind of see. I still want to keep the wall three quarters of an inch thick or so after I open it. The big mistake that sometimes people make is they pull, they get really excited and they keep wanting to pull it. They're like, oh, I want this bigger. And they pull it until they narrow it too much at the bottom and they just pull a big donut ring off the, the clay. So we don't want to do that. We always want to make sure that the, the base of the wall is still going to be a good three quarters of an inch thick after I open this. So let's just pull this open. I'm going to pull this open with a flat bottom right now. So I'm making a cylinder. So I'm pulling straight towards me and I'm keeping my left hand in the exact same position the whole time. I'm going to add a little bit more water because I could feel a little bit of friction and it was grabbing my, my uh, hands. Now let's get this out of here. I'll get that out and you can see now that I have a flat bottom with a square corner and a wall that's going straight up on the interior. Now the last little bit that I want to do before I ever start pulling the wall is I am going to just tidy up the, this wall and do a little bit of what I refer to as re-centering. So to re-center this wall, I just want to make sure that it's perfectly, perfectly centered. And for this, I am going to use a method that I refer to as the duck bill. Some of you might remember uh, Robin Hopper. He had some wonderful videos. He was a really famous uh, Canadian potter and a teacher and he would use, he referred to it as the claw. I refer to it as the duck bill though because I'm going smaller. So with my left hand, I'm going to make a duck bill, right? The fingers on the inside, the thumb is on the outside, okay? A lots of water. Then I'm going to use my right hand on the top. So I'm creating a channel through which the clay is going to pass. I'm squeezing side to side, so outside thumb, inside fingers, and then sponge with the right hand on top. That's creating pressure from three, actually four different directions. It's creating downward pressure from the right hand, inward pressure from the outside, inward pressure from the inside, and then pressure from the bottom because I'm pushing on it. So here we go. I lock these together, making sure that my left and right hands are locked, that my elbows are locked, and I have a nice stable channel through which the clay is going to pass, and boom, that is centered. I'm just going to take my sponge over the interior and get rid of any perhaps marks that I have, any weird little spirals that I don't want, and I'll get rid of some of the slip that's in there. Now I have a re-centered wall, and I am ready for pulling. And that is the next stage, is pulling. And as I mentioned before, remember to go slowly and evenly with your hand motions because again, any stage of throwing, you take your hands off quickly and you're gonna throw it off. So like if I'm, if I'm just kind of squeezing it, I take my hands off quickly, I can throw it off. So you need to just slowly release. And a quick recap, remember that opening, if you keep your left hand on the side of the wall, that helps you to keep the wall stable. I'm making a cylinder, so my uh, interior has a 90 degree corner on the inside. If your wall 
has any offsetterness, you can restabilize it by squeezing it. And check out the next video for how to pull the wall.